Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, now try this outside. Uh, make sure to have your King James Bibles out. I'm a King James Bible believer. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 10, 31. I got corrected by a brother in Christ, and I'm not above correction. Um, I keep using the word falling into sin. I fell into sin. People fall into sin. I, you've probably heard people say it before too, brothers and sisters in Christ. Is this a saying that we should be saying? <laughs> All right. So turn to Hebrews chapter 10, 31. Let's look at some things that talk about falling into something. Okay. Hebrews 10, 31. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. It is a very fearful thing. Remember the verse is talking about where Jesus is saying, No man can take him out of my hand, and no man can take him out of my Father's hand. Okay. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. When you go to get saved, you have a choice to fall into the hands of a living God. And we'll get to this a little bit further. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Because um, when you turn to Matthew chapter 21, verse 44, Matthew 21, verse 44, it says, and Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. It says the same thing in Luke chapter 21, 20, verse 18. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder powder okay it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God the first fall that a Christian comes across when we're looking at salvation is when you get saved okay you fall into the hands of a living God uh, the lost world people who reject Jesus Christ uh, when's God gonna fall on them because <laughs> we read about the stone when Jesus gonna judge them at the great white throne and they'll be crushed they'll be tossed into hell uh, cast into outer darkness, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said, um, depart from me, you cursed and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So we see here, you can fall into the hands of a living God. You can come to God broken, and he'll save you through Jesus Christ. Okay? But we make this thing that, for, I'm talking about for us as Christians, we always say we fall into sin, we fall into sin. Well, is that true? When I looked up in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say you can fall into sin. It doesn't. But what, is it, what does it say you can fall into? Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. So we see there, what can you fall into? Temptation. And it's a snare. All right. Turn to James uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that, they, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Okay, we read there that you can fall into temptations, and not just any temptation, diverse temptations. And as we're going to keep reading there, as we read in that verse, it says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. There's a reason we're tempted. Mm -hmm. It's to try our faith. It's to keep us focused on Jesus Christ. I'll jump ahead a little bit. Okay. So before we get down... Um, to ways out of temptation, I just wanted to say, hey, we need to get this out of our language. Okay? You can't fall into sin. You choose to sin. You can fall into temptation, but you choose to sin. I want to kick two different things real quick. First thing is this. You have some people that say, well, I've got it all under control. It's no big deal. I've got it under control. What does the Bible say about those people? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. We're going to read all the way to verse 12. And 12 is the key verse. Okay. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. They had it all together. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Evidence that Jesus Christ was in, in the Old Testament. 
But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted after. They fell into temptation. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for an example, and they are written for our, our admonition, upon whom the end of the world are come. What's the main thing here? Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Bible in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 tells us that we're supposed to be sober. We're supposed to be vigilant. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You think you got it all under control, don't take your eyes off Jesus. Okay? I don't have it under control. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. God's got my life under control. And when my life goes sideways, goes off to the left or the right, it's my fault. I chose to sin. I fell into temptation. I didn't fall into sin. I chose to sin. Okay? It's very important. When you think everything's perfect, don't drop your guard. You think your life is just everything's going great. Don't drop your guard. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, okay? Now, another warning I'm going to kick, okay? Is there's people that believe that, hey, my sins are my sins and they're not yours. When it comes to answering to God, yes. But there's a part in the Bible where Paul warns us about how our sins can tempt other people. Okay? Romans 14, 13. You want to turn to Romans 14, 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Okay? When I look at the stuff, the sins that I've committed, or things that I fall into, one of the things that, hits my, that gets to me is, what if I tempt somebody else? What I'm doing wrong, what if it reflects and somebody else falls into the same temptation? And the next thing you know, they choose to sin like I did. Okay? We're supposed to strengthen one another. Okay? We're not supposed to weaken one another. That's why you got to get that sin out of your life. Okay? Ways out of temptation. Remember, you cannot fall into sin. You choose to sin. What do you fall into? You fall into temptation. So... Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13. A lot of my brothers and sisters of Christ out there know this one. It's a very important verse. Right. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will, suffer, who will not suffer you to be tempted above the ear able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Right. God allows temptation. But he will not allow you to be tempted above you, that you are able. And why does he allow temptation? What we read up there? Okay. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It helps you to be patient. Strengthens your faith. Okay. You get temptation that starts to come in. What can you do? First and foremost thing, two things that go hand in hand. Psalms 119.9. If you want to turn to Psalms 119.9. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. This is your number one defense. Again, because it, it teaches everything I'm teaching here. This is your number one defense against temptation. Okay? Are you reading this every morning? Are you reading it at night before bed? Are you doing Bible studies every so often? Are you singing old hymns that oftentimes come word for word from the Bible? And that's gonna, I'm skipping ahead on that one. But this right here. Brother Jesus Christ. And here's the thing. Reading it isn't good enough. I'm sorry, I've always pushed it. I know other brethren out there have always pushed it. Reading this book is not good enough. Buying this book and having it on the shelf collecting dust is definitely not good enough. 
but buying it and sitting here and reading it is not good enough. Okay, I read it. I've to, I had to hurry up quickly get through it. I got my, through my chapter, and I put it down back on the shelf. What does that verse say? It says, um, Thy word have I hid in mine heart. If this isn't making it down here, you're not doing something right. You're not coming to God in the right spirit. This needs to go here. And it goes here because it's reflected by the life you're living. When you read it, you say, God, show me. What am I supposed to be doing? What am I not supposed to be doing? This temptation comes in. Oh, Lord, I'm going to sit and read the Bible. Oh, that's right, Lord, you wanted me to go uh, work in the garden. Um, I need to go work on the car. I was going to build that shelf, Lord. I can talk to you and build the shelf, which leads to the second thing. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Second thing you can do to get out of temptation when you fall into temptation. Okay. That's pray without ceasing. Talk with the Lord all the time. Don't get me wrong. Fervent prayer, there's times where you're going to be on your knees and you're going to bow your head and you're just going to focus 100% on praying and only praying. But you can talk to God while you're doing things. You can be going for a walk in the, in the out here in the wilderness and talk with the Lord. You can be working on that shelf and talk with the Lord. You can be working on that garden and talk with the Lord and giving Him thanks for all the things He's done for you. Okay? You can talk to the Lord all the time. That's why I always push when it says pray without ceasing. It's not saying keeping your eyes closed and bowing your head 24-7. It means you're to talk to the Lord about everything. Everything you do, everything becomes 100% about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 16, 18. Here's a warning to the brethren. Mm -hmm. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Mm -hmm. If you have sin that you're holding on to and you're justifying it, God's not going to hear your prayers. That's holding it in your heart. Struggling with sin is one thing. Justifying sin is another. Okay. Don't fall into the trap of justifying sin. I've been seeing that lately with some of the professing Christians and some of the brethren. Okay. Don't fall into that trap. Okay. Someone comes to you, first of all, your conscience is going to convict you. And you can say, well, I'm going to ignore the con my conscience. The Holy Spirit will come convict you. Then you can say, well, I heard him. He's right, but I'm going to ignore him. That's quenching the Spirit. I'm going to ignore him. You're still convicted, but you're going to ignore him. Well, I'm just going to ignore him. And then God will come and chasten you. That's, those are the steps. But when you get to the point where God's going to have to chasten you, you're holding iniquity in your heart. Okay? You want God to hear your prayers. Don't hold iniquity in your heart. Don't become one of those people that justifies their sins. Someone comes to you respectfully and says, Hey, the Bible says this. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, drunkenness. Your body's a temple for the Holy Ghost if you're doing stuff to damage your body and whatnot. Have the brokenness to say, Hey, you know what? They're right. I need to get this stuff out. Lord, help me get this stuff out of my life. Amen. But this right here is the biggest thing that's going to help you out of temptation when you fall into temptation. The Word of God. Second is prayer. And I said they go hand in hand because you pray to God to open this book to you. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. How do you know that? Because I have a perfect written Word of God. And God has opened that verse to me and explained to me that I'm supposed to make everything about Him. Lord, today I'm going to build a shelf. Can you help me build this shelf, Lord? What do you think? Should I be doing this? And just talk with the Lord. Okay. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. One of the things that I found also that can help get you out of temptation, that God provides a way out. He's given us His Word to provide a way out. He's, talk, he's taught us and talked to us about prayer, a relationship, personal relationship, to help us out reaches his hand down, we grab his hand, and he pulls us out of that temptation. All right. Another thing is, is blessings. Counting your blessings. Ephesians 1.3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus 
Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay. There's spiritual blessings and then there's physical blessings. How often do you guys thank the Lord? When you start getting to temptation, you're like, wait a minute, I'm being tempted to fall back into the being that old man. Okay. Uh, I remember being broken, coming to the cross. I remember, Lord, what you did for me on the cross. I don't want to do that anymore. Lord, thank you for saving me. Lord, forgive me, Lord, of those sins. It doesn't matter if those sins were years ago. There's nothing wrong with bringing them up between you and the Lord, saying, Lord, I'm being tempted with this sin. I sinned these sins a long time ago. I don't want to have anything to do with them, Lord. I remember what you did for me on the cross. I remember my, what my life was like back then. You've changed my life. I don't want my life to go back that way. I don't want the old man. Okay? You start counting your blessings. The biggest spiritual blessing is salvation. Thanking the Lord. Uh, Romans 4, 7. Saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I did eight twice. I don't know why that's on here twice. It's important. You thank the Lord for His forgiveness. You thank the Lord for what He's done for you. You thank Him for all the things in your life. Next thing you know, that temptation is gone. You sit down to do a Bible study and you start you know, really getting involved. I tried to push the brethren to make um, cards, flash cards you can carry on you. So even if you're outside in the yard working, if temptation starts hitting you, take a break, sit down somewhere, pull out those flash cards, start reading the Word of God and start talking to the Lord and how they apply to your life, key verses and everything. Do it. Uh, when you do Bible studies, highlighting. Some people have journals where they take notes when they do Bible studies and certain subjects and stuff like that. Get you to physically do something as you're doing a study so you're not just one of those people that are just standing there looking. Have your Bible open. That's why we have a big push to have the Bible open, flipping and following along. Okay. Uh, Another thing you can do that helps out a lot is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. This one came up recently for a controversy. Uh, I don't know why it's a big controversy. You want to do something that's pleasing to God, not pleasing to your flesh. But Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody, there's the key word, in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your heart being for the Lord and melody. It's not about bass. It's not about rhythm overpowering, the bass and the rhythm overpowering the melody. Okay, But you can sing old hymns. People have been asking questions. I saw them in comments under Brother Brian's channel and some of his videos against uh, the CCNM music. Well then what do I listen to? You know, there's music in here. Uh, it's a whole book series called Psalms. Get a piano. I've got a video on here. It's really old. I probably could do a new one where I just came up with a melody. I figured out something that sounded really nice on the piano, and then I just started playing it and started singing hymns from the uh, hymns, uh, Psalms. I start, okay, Psalms chapter 1, I just start singing it through, and then repeat it, sing it through, repeat it, and then every night I'd sing a couple of verses. And some of them, it, was, it just seemed to fit, and it was really amazing. Some of it, you know, it's a work in progress. But my point is, is you can never go wrong with Psalms. If you know how to write music, you know how to play music, uh, write some music and put Psalms to it, and make sure it's melody, make sure it's pleasing to God. You're at peace when you're singing it, and it pleases God. Your flesh isn't getting all riled up, okay? You're not getting all sad and everything. No, peace. And it's for the Lord to glorify God. So when temptation starts coming along, what's another way to get that temptation? Start singing a song. There's still some old hymns I like. Uh, my favorite that got me out of trouble when I was newly saved, I got kind of puffed up a little bit. I have everything under control, Lord, don't you worry. You got this stuff out of my life, I got everything under control. I made some major mistakes and fell flat on my face. 
and God gave me the song, uh, the old hymn, uh, Day by Day. And that was the first hymn I ever memorized. And I still sing that to this day. There's times where it's like when the days seem to be getting tough, I just start singing day by day. And with each passing moment. Okay? We're supposed to live day to day. So, this was a correction on me, brothers and sisters in Christ. Hopefully it's a correction on you if you're also doing the same mistake that I did. Um, just remember to get that out of your vocabulary. You don't fall into sin. You choose to sin. You choose to sin, and that's when you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow Jesus Christ. Repent, forsake, and move on. Okay? Get that out of your vocabulary. I'm working on getting it out of my vocabulary. You can fall into temptation. And when you fall into temptation, God's hand is out all the time saying, I've made a way for you to get out of that temptation. There is no temptation too great that my hand can't grab yours and pull you out of it. There isn't. So when you, so when you choose to sin, you're not accidentally falling into sin. That's what falling in means. It's, it's an, it, no, you fell into sin, there's no falling into sin. You chose to sin. See, I'm almost slipping up to say it again. It's something I have to work on. Yeah. You chose to sin. God's hand's there. There's no temptation where God can't pull you out of it. None. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you fall into temptation and then you choose to sin, what happened? You didn't go through Jesus Christ. You didn't grab his hand. He had his hand out, but you didn't grab his hand. These people playing these video games, he's got his hand out. The, you know, And I was one of them playing video games where I was tempted and I fell back into playing video games. God's hand was out the whole time. It was my fault. People have problem with alcohol. You fell back into drinking again. You, I mean, sorry, you fell into the temptation and then you chose to drink. God's hand was out there the whole time. And guess what? Even though you fell into, this, uh, you fell into temptation and chose to sin, God's hand is still out there. He'll still pick you back up. He'll still put you back together and get you back on the right track. That's what a loving father we have. That's how great it is when it comes to being a Christian. God will get you back on that right path. So hopefully this has helped you out, brothers and sisters in Christ, and convicted some of us. Um, so grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.